This question appeared in NEET PG 2021 and the question asks highest mobility on electrophoresis is seen in and your options are VLDL, Chylomicron, LDL and SDL. Now this is a very very important topic lipoproteins every year one or two question may come on lipoproteins so let's go ahead and look and learn everything about lipoproteins so what are lipoproteins lipoproteins are transport you know carriers made up of protein and fat or lipids and what is their primary function to carry some diff some kind of lipids in our body so lipoproteins are carrier molecules which are made up of lipid and protein and they carry lipids now this is a general representation of a lipoprotein so lipoprotein will have what you call is a phospholipid layer okay right and inside the phospholipid layer is whatever lipid they are going to carry and there will be some peripheral apolipoproteins and there will be some integral apolipoproteins what do i mean by peripheral means this apolipoprotein will sit on the periphery of this transport molecule and this may be integrated with the wall of the lipoprotein so once again whatever i have told you what is lipoprotein so lipoprotein is a carrier molecule made up of lipid and protein and their main function is to carry some sort of lipid throughout our body we will see in details all the different types of lipoprotein but this is a basic lipoprotein what is a general structure of lipoprotein so general structure is they will have a phospholipid layer and that will create a container kind of a thing and inside this container is whatever lipid they are going to carry we will see that some will carry cholesterol some will carry triglyceride and then to facilitate its function we will have peripheral apoproteins or integral apoproteins peripheral will lie completely on the surface of the lipoprotein okay and integral will get integrated with the membrane okay of the lipoprotein the peripheral lipo apolipoprotein apoproteins are ace and the integral are b 4800 na so we'll see about all these but i hope you are very very clear about what is lipoproteins now what are the different types of lipoprotein so now we are going to see different types of lipoprotein what is their function okay and what is the apolipo apoproteins which are there because apoproteins is what will help you to differentiate between various different types of lipoprotein so first we have is chylomicron okay the second we have is chylomicron remnant third we have is vldl next we have is vldl remnant also called as intermediate density lipoprotein vldl means very low density lipoprotein then we have got ldl which is low density lipoprotein and then we have got hdl which is high density lipoprotein so i'll tell you a brief about all these lipoproteins what is their function where do they originate so let's start with chylomicron so chylomicron the main function is so let's start with the function only okay so the main function of chylomicron is whenever we eat food whatever you know lipids are there whatever fat is there in the food it will help to carry that triglycerides from the small intestine into our liver and peripheral tissue is it clear so its function is to carry triglycerides okay from small intestine to liver and peripheral tissue so where it is formed where it is formed so it is formed in your small intestine very very important so it is formed in small intestine what is the you know characteristic apoprotein which is found in chylomicron so remember b48 apoprotein is found in chylomicron clear okay so we know its function we know its apoprotein where it is formed now this chylomicron which was formed in the small intestine it starts distributing peripheral you know all the triglyceride to the peripheral tissue so its primary content is triglyceride so as it is distributing it will keep distributing triglyceride and keep picking some amount of cholesterol okay so then it is converted into chylomicron remnant and what happens is now 
initially it was primarily triglyceride which it was carrying but because it has been distributing triglyceride and there, the amount of cholesterol in that particular you know uh, vessel has increased why because suppose initially it was having 99% triglyceride and 1% cholesterol now it has kept giving away its you know triglyceride but the cholesterol is still there so it will get converted into you know 30% triglyceride and 70% cholesterol so this will have both triglyceride as well as cholesterol in it okay and chylomicron is not formed remnant is not formed anywhere and as it is transmitting throughout the body it will have b48 which was originally there plus it will acquire apoe so these are the two apo proteins which are present in chylomicron remnant clear let's talk about vldl now vldl does the exact thing but with the endogenous triglyceride here we are talking about exogenous which means what we take in the food vldl you know we know that liver will produce a lot of triglycerides okay now to transport that triglyceride from liver to peripheral tissue we need this vldl okay so what is vldl it is it is the lipoprotein which is formed in the liver and what is its function it will carry the endogenous endogenous triglyceride from the liver which is formed in the liver throughout the body okay so this is your vldl function also we are clear and this will have apo b100 clear now the similar way when chylomicron was transformed into chylomicron remnant vldl is transformed into vldl remnant that is also called as idl or intermediate density lipoprotein okay so what will happen similarly when chylomicron only had triglyceride right VLDL remnant and chylomicron remnant has triglyceride plus cholesterol. VLDL remnant will also have triglyceride plus cholesterol. Is it clear? So we know what is VLDL remnant, how it is formed. It is formed from VLDL. Okay. And here also similarly, B100 plus ApoE will be seen in VLDL remnant. Clear? What about LDL? So LDL again, what it will do is, it is again formed in liver but it does not transport triglyceride. What it transports is cholesterol, okay? So even cholesterol is formed in liver. So whatever cholesterol is formed in river, liver, it transports it from liver to peripheral tissue. So this is the you know, work of LDL. That's why it is called as a bad cholesterol, which means if you have high LDL, which, which means there's a lot of cholesterol which is being produced by your liver, which has to be distributed throughout your peripheral tissue. So LDL, is produced in liver and it transports cholesterol from liver to peripheral tissue and what are the apoproteins which it will have so it will have apob100 plus apoe okay the last is sdl also called as the good cholesterol so what is its function so again it will be produced by the liver okay and it is the only lipoprotein which is empty which means when it is produced it is empty and what it will do is it will go to the peripheral tissue and whatever excess amount of cholesterol is there in the peripheral tissue it will convert it into cholesterol ester and bring it back for liver for destruction or certain peripheral tissues like you know uh, you know your testes for generation of hormones is it clear so function of ldl is to transport cholesterol ester remember it does not transport cholesterol, it transports cholesterol ester and this has been asked as a question. So it transports cholesterol ester from peripheral tissue to either liver or you know other stereo steroid generating tissue. Is it clear? Right? And what it will have? So it's a very very you know uh, lipo, uh, apoprotein rich uh, lipoprotein. So it will have apo a, apo C, and apo E. So all these different lipoproteins in just around 10 minutes I have told you where they are formed, what do they carry, what is their function, and what is the specific lipo, uh, apoprotein which is specifically associated with that lipoprotein. I hope you are very very clear and there is all the questions from what does it carry? What is it made up of? What is its function? Where it is, you know, made? And what are the apoproteins? Now coming to their, you know, characteristic or physical characteristic feature. Now remember, if we go in this direction, 
okay from chylomicron to sdl so chylomicron is largest so size may this is a decreasing order which means chylomicron is the largest after that chylomicron remnant after that vldl after that vldl remnant after that ldl and after that sdl clear density is increasing because what you see is sdl is primarily made up of protein chylomicron is primarily made up of lipid so if you go so chylomicron is the least heaviest and sdl is the most dense or heaviest also if you see triglyceride or lipid content is decreasing which means chylomicron will have most amount of lipid content and sdl will have least amount of protein when we talk about protein content or apoprotein content this will be increasing which means chylomicron has the least amount of proteins and sdl has highest amount of proteins is it clear so size decreases density increases lipid decreases protein content increases and we have seen that protein lipid are basically electro neutral okay they are hydrophobic but proteins are hydrophilic and they have charges okay so if this has the highest amount of protein which will have highest electrophoretic mobility obviously sdl so coming back to the question highest mobility on electrophoresis is seen in so we know that the highest will be seen in sdl and the lowest will be seen in chylomicron once again remember if you have to arrange it chylomicron vldl ldl and sdl these are the primary uh, lipoproteins so size will decrease okay density will increase lipid content will decrease protein content will increase and because protein content uh, protein content will uh, will be highest here okay so it will decrease and then electrophoretic mobility will be highest here so again it will decrease is it clear so this is the correct answer the correct answer is dl this is a very very important very high yield topic from biochemistry and uh, at least one question in every exam i can expect from this particular topic